Hey, it's the champ Antonio Tarver, and you're listening to Tarver's Tate. I want to dive right into the big fight that we're going to end the year off, December 23rd, Day of Reckoning in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and they're still celebrating Riyadh season in their country. Um, so uh, it's going to be a big fight card, man, stacked from top to bottom. I want to go over some of the uh, fights that are be highlighted, uh, starting with the big superstars, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. Uh, Anthony Joshua, who's fighting Otto Wallen, who's coming in, man, with only one loss, and that was to uh, linear champion Tyson Fury in a fight that a lot of people thought was more contested than uh, they thought should have been. You know, Otto Wallen being a southpaw and a very methodical boxer. He really likes to take his time, really get the feel of the fight as, you know, before he started, you know, uh, executing his game plan. So, you know, he has the amateur pedigree, and you can see that. You know, he knows how to throw in places shots. You know, very crafty fighter, I might add. Not really uh, foot fleeted. He really slow on the foot when it comes to boxing, but he does know how to move. You understand? He's not going to uh, – he's going to give you some angles. He's going to want to, you know, set things up. He want to take his time. So if you allow a guy like Otto Wallen to get comfortable – in a fight, you know, uh, he could be problematic for you, you know, especially with a guy as big and strong as Anthony Joshua. So it would be who Anthony Joshua to come into this fight uh, with a, a, a real uh, a focus plan of uh, getting this guy out of there, not really want to take him rounds. You know, I know a lot of times they say it's good when fighters get rounds, but I believe this fight is it, really in his best interest to go ahead and show the dominance that he has uh, at this division, you know, be aggressive, you know, right out the gate, your power is going to be your, uh, your, your best tool for this fight. So you want to go out and show that a guy like Otto Wallen is too small and, and, and just uh, don't have enough firepower to stand in the ring with a guy like Anthony Joshua. That's what you would think his training camp and his team is really gearing him up to do because what he wants to do is make a statement here. But he has a guy that's not going to really uh, play along with that. This is a guy that believes he can win over the course of action, over the course of rounds. Otto Wallen believe he can get out in front of Anthony Joshua and maybe force Anthony in having to secure a knockout to win. Now, you don't want that. So you don't want a guy like Otto Wallen to get confidence in a fight like this. So it's going to be important that AJ come out behind a strong jab and really letting his power dictate this fight. And if I was AJ and his team, I will be really looking, and I don't like to tell fighters to look for knockouts, but in this case, I think AJ should be looking for a knockout. And I'm thinking inside of six rounds, because if he let Otto Waller get into his rhythm and get in his time and he start trying to play chess with a guy as crappy as Wallen, he's going to have some difficulty. So that is not a fight you want to just look over. This is a fight you want to really pay close attention to and not uh, if AJ win, but how AJ win. You know what I mean? And to really show. And again, AJ is flipping, flopping with his trainers. He really hasn't got comfortable with anyone as of yet. And he's done that throughout his career. So, you know, it's going to be important that he gets someone that he really feels that he can build with and, and really set himself up, man, to really get those lessons that can make him possibly in the next four to five, six months, the best heavyweight in the world. And that's what he's going to be looking to do with a convincing victory over a tough and crafty Otto Wallace. So you want to pay very close attention to that fight. And uh, Deontay Wilder and Joe Parker, uh, this is another fight that has some, some, some real uh, challenges when you look at it, uh, when you put Joe Parker under the microscope, here's a guy that uh, had a fight with AJ, uh, lost that fight, but uh, had some good rounds. Uh, he fought Joe Joyce when Joe Joyce was at the top of his game before he had those uh, losses and, and then the knockouts, you know. So, uh, you know, before Joe Joyce had those issues, he was one of the most uh, uh, looked and, and, and recognized heavyweights in the game. And, Joe Parker went in there and fought him very tough. Uh, even though he didn't win that fight, he fought him tough. Joe Parker been around, had the WBO title, I believe, for a 
short stint. And and uh has been around the top of the mountain for quite some time. So here's a guy that's uh, I believe not gonna be intimidated by Wilder early. Not gonna be intimidated by Wilder, he's gonna be trying to get in there and, and, and he's a guy that can box now. He can box and he's been active. I think that's gonna be the key for Joe Parker. He's been active more so than Wilder. Wilder coming in, like most PBC fighters as of late, they've been coming in, man, uh, behind the eight ball with these long layoffs before they get into these big fights. And there's no way that these guys can be at the top of their form with those type of uh, layoffs and, and not really, you know, uh, using the skills and practicing the skills that they have. You know, you got to be active, man, if you want to ever become your best. So with that, I think that is going to be a Achilles heel for Wilder, or it could be if he allows it. But I see him and, uh, him and his trainer, Malik Scott, been working on a lot of good stuff we've been seeing. And boy, if they can put all that together and, and Wilder come in and show the control and show that poise that he hasn't shown us as of late, especially with the Tyson fights, and I think that was the difference maker in all those fights. I think if he came out with a little bit more control and, and, and a little bit more foot control, footwork, and don't panic when you get in a tough spot in a fight. That's the time you got to show your poise and control. You got to breathe. These are the things that I think Wilder is going to have to show that he has gotten a lot better at. And they've been working on some stuff. So we, you know, I'm anxious to see the new Wilder, man, the new Wilder. And we haven't, we really don't know. The, the, the book is still out. You know, we don't know what he's really developed to and how, what he's, how the wrinkles that he's added. And, and, you know, we see the work that he's done, but we're not going to know that the stuff has been applied until Wilder is under that heat of a real fight. And we didn't get that with the early knockout he had against Hellenius. We didn't get that, you know, so we're going to want to see, you know, Wilder maybe get some rounds and show that he has the control to control himself as well as Joe Parker, keep him on the end of that stick, and then set that knockout up. If we can see that, then we see that Wilder is improving and he's become a better fighter, more calculating fighter, and that. The, that's the Wilder that we all been waiting to see, man. And we hope that that him and Malik Scott, man, have really put a game plan together to go in here against a guy that's been active, been busy, and that has the ability to make this a tough night for Deontay Wilder. If Deontay isn't on his, his best game, if this is the same old Deontay, then this fight can be choppy as well as the fight with AJ and all the Wilder. So that gives you reason to really – tap into this fight man because i don't think these are just setup fights and i don't think these these guys are just going to be able to walk straight through these guys i think all of these fights are contested and going to have his challenges if these guys ain't on their a game so that's why we're going to want to tap in and pay close attention to day of reckoning you know i think that if both of these guys fight i think and uh they already have a date that they're talking about in march and you know me i'm old school I think that always has been a bad omen. And we saw that just with the Tyson Fury fight in the Naganu. That fight was too close to call on some people's eyes. And I believe if that fight with Usyk wouldn't have been in the way, I don't think Tyson Fury would have probably been as, as distracted on looking past Naganu. You know what I mean? And uh, so that is a case for both of these headline fights, man. Uh, how they come out how they approach the fight, and not if they win, but how they win. Do we see the improvement? And then we can really look forward to both of these guys facing off and having to see who is the next guy up after we see what happens with Undisputed. Once the smoke is cleared there, maybe a guy, they might be able to get back in the picture with a Tyson Fury or a Usyk, and then come back around and be at the top of the heat when it's all said and done. They still have a way to become undisputed, but they got to win. And I think they got to continue to look good at the end of the day. And another fight that I think is getting a lot of attention and should be two fighters. I believe is at the crossroad 
And I believe I haven't seen a crossroad fight like this in a long time. Gerald Big Baby Miller versus Daniel DeBose, man. And I believe this fight is going to have some fireworks. Both of these guys are big punchers. Both of these guys are big guys. Uh, we know DeBose just, DeBose just came off a, a controversial uh, TKO loss to the uh, unified champion, Usyk. And uh, in a fight where he had Usyk down, with somewhat some people feel was a, a clean body shot or the effects of a clean body shot, but it was called low. But a lot of people thought when they put their eye on that, that that could have been, uh, Usyk could have got away with one. Uh, but uh, the referee didn't see it like that. Uh, it was like in the, in, the, in the heat of the moment, it's hard to call those shots if they're not obvious to everyone or obvious to the eye. And that was a borderline shot. But when I look at how Usyk went down and he didn't grab his genitals, he didn't go grab his, his general, his balls. He went down from the effects of the body shot. And it wasn't a low blow to the point where his groin area was affected. So we didn't see that. And, and so that says a lot for Daniel DeBose, who has a good body shot. You know, that's what they work on uh, in his camp. So, uh, Big Baby Miller, he got a, a, a big target there uh, around the midsection, and I know Daniel's going to be going for that. Uh, but, but Big Baby Miller, I believe, uh, is a guy with the talent uh, and can fight. The guy got all the skills, uh, but a lot of people feel that it's his, uh, con uh, his commitment to his conditioning uh, that's been keeping him uh, from that next level or becoming champion. Uh, having the opportunity to fight for a title shot. And, but this is what I call a crossroad fight, and this is pretty much the title shot for both of these guys because neither one of these guys could stand uh, for the loss right now uh, with where their career sits, you know, with DeBose coming off of that late stop stoppage. If he can't get a win over Big Baby Miller, then they're going to have to start rethinking his career. And Big Baby Miller being out of the, of the mix so long, and having to fall back and sit back for a while uh, before he got back going. And he's been active. Even he's been doing exhibition fights that may not even appear on his record, but he's been active. And I like that. You know what I mean? When you can always add a training camp onto a training camp that, you know, allows you to get in shape just that much faster. So you can focus on, you know, not losing weight, but your game plan more so than, you know, how much weight you want to lose for your fight. So being active also allowed these guys to be in tip-top shape. So I would think Big Baby Miller, just having fought uh, earlier in the year, uh, you know, should be in somewhat a, a good condition for this fight. And when you see him talk, you know, it, he's putting himself right there again to have all the lights on him and have him be forced to do something, you know, uh, you know, unexpected. You know, that's not one of these guys out or beat one of these guys going away. You know what I mean? That's what we want to see from Big Baby Miller. We want to see him, you know, you know, spread a little distance between some of these contenders. And this would be a perfect time to do that. You know, I would, would want to see Gerald Miller being a little bit more focused this week rather than, you know, getting into it with AJ. You know, the focus, the mental focus, I think is going to be your key to success. You don't want to be distracted with everything that's going on around you. Let's stay focused on Daniel DeBose, get him out of there, and then you can rethink, you know, where you want to go from there. But a win over Daniel DeBose, an impressive win, will definitely put Big Baby Miller back in the title conversation. And let's not forget, he's still undefeated. No one has beat the man. So until then, Big Baby Miller is still a guy you want to look out for, man. But, you know, he don't want to be his worst enemy. You know what I mean? Help yourself. In a bet. And to do that, you know, let's, let's stay focused on the fighter in front of you. You know what I mean? Don't get distracted with AJ right now. He got his business and you got yours. You know, don't lose this chance. You know what I mean? The week of the fight. Let's lock in. Tunnel vision, big baby Miller, and let's do it for the team, man. Do it for the state, do it for Brooklyn, do it for New York. You feel me? And, and, and let's show these people, man, what you really made of. And I think uh, Daniel DeBose is the type of fighter that can really show that. So, you know, really push you to that, you know, limit. I think this is a pick em fight, man. I believe this fight is 50 50. 
because both of these fighters have so much to prove. And we'll see, can they get it done on the day of reckoning, December 23rd, man, don't miss it. Uh, I think we'll have it on DAZN pay-per-view, man. So tap in. I think it's at affordable price. When you look at all the stars and all the names on this card, man, it's a discount price at $39.99, I believe. You want to tap into the zone, man. I can't wait. Uh, and Daniel DuBose is a knockout puncher now out of his knock, uh, 19 wins. 18 guys 